Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live, coming to you from our studio here at Adesawa in Accra. My name is Martin Isidu Dutta. Coming up within the next one hour. Police secure injunction to halt planned demonstration by Rastafari Council seeking to push for the decriminalization of marijuana in Ghana. Lawyers of Radio XYZ and four others fail to show up in an Accra High Court to move a motion to strike out an, an application by the NCA. And the Ghana's Electoral Commission awards contract in excess of $60 million without clearance by the Finance Ministry. We have details of all these stories and more, including business, sports, entertainment, all coming up for you. Let's start from the courts now because lawyers of uh, Radio XYZ and four others on Wednesday failed to make an appearance in an Accra High Court to move their motion seeking an order of the court to strike out a yet-to-be-moved application of the NCA that accuses the chairman of the Electro Electronic Communications Tribunal, uh, Professor Justice Samuel Dateba of Byers. Now, a motion on notice filed by lawyers of the NCA on June the 12th uh, contends the chairman of the ECT has who has tendered in his resignation letter to the Public Services Commission is likely to be biased against the NCA in the mediation effort. This was after the chairman of the ECT accused the NCA of gross neglect of the tribunal. His resignation takes effect from the 1st of July and the NCA submits that the ECT chair should not be allowed to mediate the case involving the NCA while he awaits to leave office. The radio stations that have suffered closure by the regulator are Radio XYZ Broadcasting Limited, uh, Network Broadcasting Limited, Ad Adunu Media Limited, Genesis Media Limited, and Geo Richard Company Limited. Due to the absence of both lawyers and representatives of the various affected radio stations, the court presided over by Justice Olivia Obing instructed lawyer of the NCA, Gary Nemakumafo, to propose a new date of hearing and also ensure that the parties on the other side are served with new hearing notices to make an appearance. With the guidance of the court, the NCA lawyer settled on July 22 as the next sitting date. So chronism and nepotism are the bane of Ghana's problems. That the, that's the view of the Auditor General Daniel Yao Domlevo. He called for the streamlining of recruitment into public service. Daniel Yao Domlevo was speaking at the second national dialogue on public accountability abuse of, of office in Accra. Chronism, uh, nepotism, all those things are the pain of what we are suffering today. I think the requirement or the prerequisite of occupying any position or recruitment into the army, police, etc., should be on merit. That should be the common denominator. Do you qualify, then you go. We must put systems in place to remove the discretion from it. To say, go through the contest, once you meet this criteria, you go. If you don't meet it, you go and find your own level. Recruitment into the public service, we should be able to streamline it. But a bigger debate I've been asking for is the public service itself. What type of public service do we need as a country? And I, whenever that question comes to my mind, I get confused because I wonder what's the meaning of public service. Whether it's people who serve the public or the people who public send. <laughs> Do you get me? Because you look at the public servant, he doesn't look like a servant at all. He is a master of public. He's never a servant. You get the point? So as a people, we should ask ourselves, if you want to be an auditor general, what do you require of you? If you don't need that, don't come near. If you want to be the inspector general of police, what do you require to be there? Or if you want to be recruited into the army, what is required of you? We must define this and stick to it. Meanwhile, private legal practitioner and law lecturer at GIMPA, 
uh, that is Clara Berry Casa T, has noted that there is a need for institutions to enforce laws governing their operations. She further called for a review of the 1992 constitution to ensure public servants are held accountable for their actions. Yes, we need better systems, but our problem is not just a system issue. It's also, to a very large extent, a value system issue. Now, we haven't inculcated or developed the values that support those kinds of systems. For example, we do, I, there is no lack of laws as to what is the right thing to do and the consequences for not doing it. So we, there is no lack of consequences. But what happens? Does it actually happen? No. We preach a lot of the time and we don't do what we preach. So we talk about merit and all of that and nobody is ready to do merit. So with, of course, people learn to, people begin to realize that, look, focusing on your merit is not going to get you very high. So they just become human beings and do what they, they need to do. All the power is concentrated, really, the, the people that public institutions know they ought to be accountable to in reality or otherwise something happens is the politician. Now, if public institutions don't serve the public well, the public may file complaints. A lot of the time, nothing is going, going to come out of it. But politicians can, can do something about it because of the way we've, we've fashioned our laws. So I keep making the point that it is time we take another look at the 1992 Constitution. It has said as well. It has brought us to where we are. But that legal framework needs to be revisited because apart from securing votes, which is that we vote every five years, every four years. When it comes to real accountability and real power and capability of the citizens to hold public officers accountable, it's not there. Less, less. So I think we need to rework the accountability bit. With our democracy has to come with accountability. In other stories this afternoon, the National Peace Council has suspended uh, any further discussion on a draft document on banning vigilantism till the next two weeks after the leadership of the NDC rejected the document. According to the NDC, the Peace Council failed to invite them to make inputs. The National Democratic Congress, NDC, blamed the Peace Council for failing to invite them to discuss the document. General Secretaries of NDC and PP have asked the Peace Council to be fair in its dealings. The no technical committee, as far as we are concerned, uh, invited us to bring any input. Only to be ambushed today with what appears to be a draft of the technical committee. And by the terms of the previous, uh, you know, communique, our views are supposed to be incorporated in the draft that will be presented to plenary. And indeed, we selected the two members of our party who would be uh, engaging the technical committee. So we never heard so about it. Within two weeks, we'll look at the arrangement that the technical experts had brought and, and segregate it into more of the things that we have the authority to be able to do, like the disbandment of vigilante group, prohibition of their existence, and also uh, helping the security agencies to, to enforce the laws. This has compelled the chairman of the Peace Council, Professor Emmanuel Asante, to suspend the meeting. We submitted a document for discussion. We've started discussing, but we think that we need more time the political parties in their caucuses to have a look at it. It's such a very com a, you know, complex document that we need to study it carefully. Meanwhile, the MPP has accused the NDC for delaying the process in banning vigilant groups. It is NDC rather who felt they still need more time to give their input to the document. And this is a dialogue. So we felt that we should give them the opportunity to have the two weeks to prepare and put their input. But the NDC disagreed and rather requested the release of the Mershot Commission's report on Ayawaso by elections. Now you have a committee report. We have said that, look, let us even recommend to the president to release the committee report so that we will know the recommendations there, which can then be incorporated in whatever we are doing. They say no. 
And certainly that's still an unfolding story. We'll keep an eye on it and keep you posted. Let's shift our attention to um, something that is very imminent. That is natural disasters if we are not careful because we are in the month of June, entering July, uh, which is a rainy season as deemed by some uh, by many so the national disaster management organization nadmo has received financial clearance from the finance ministry to pay metropolitan municipal and district directors across the country the metropolitan municipal and district directors had threatened to pro uh, protest over the unpaid salaries for close to 18 months now we've been joined in studio by georgia you see he's the director of communications at the uh, finance at, at nadmo and we don't find out from them really if they have had this clearance and how soon they intend to call off that threat or whether that threat is off the table. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, good afternoon, my brother. Uh, 18 months without paying your stuff. Why is that? How, how did we arrive at this position? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's it's uh, the case. Initially, when they were uh, appointed, they were appointed in acting capacity. So, so uh, when it so happens, then we need to go through certain processes as getting financial clearance from finance ministry and then uh, putting them on the NADMO uh, pay structure. Okay, the issues of when you, you are a director compared to a NADMO ranking system, are you a disaster control officer or a principal disaster control officer or those uh, things? So we needed to do all those things, right. structure them, submit it to finance uh, to see whether uh, the comments rate and then what are the pay grades and then the terms and conditions of service. Do, do, do service. you not have a structure in place where you know that if you are at this level, this is how much you're supposed yes, to Yes, we do. Is we it do. now that you're doing that? No, no. These... Uh, appointees you get when they come as director okay uh, what is the qualification grade where do you place them right and so all those things had to be done and then submitted to finance and then they ought to authenticate that indeed uh, the structures are being followed and then these are the terms and conditions that go with it and so initially we gave them appointment letter uh, in acting capacity without those terms and conditions and salaries this thing so now that has been done uh, forwarded to to their finance ministry so they when they are satisfied they will push it to their controller and accountant general for them to be oh, ruled oh, oh. onto their pay uh, structure there are those who have accused or who have raised concerns regarding um, you know political sentiments and political inclinations was that uh, do you think that uh, is part of why you've not been able to sort all of these out where they say for instance because there's a new government in place there's a likelihood that party supporters are now going to be taking those positions or those of the former government are now being cleared out, etc. Did any of that no, play no. a role? No, no. Of the former people who were the directors, they're still there, but they've been transferred to other places. In fact, they are even in court that uh, they don't have to be transferred and all that. And yes, people have been appointed to take over in acting capacity so that uh, we'll streamline the whole thing. Yes, yeah, so if somebody is talking a uh, party issue, I wouldn't uh, begrudge the person, but nobody uh, has been sacked, but they've been moved uh, to play. Supposing you were the director here, and they say now somebody is taking over as the director, mm. then it's not too prudent for you to continue to be a subservient of that new director. So we move you to maybe no, but what, a district why is that? to mm -hmm. and co. <laughs> why, 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 why have we had to do these uh, movements? What has it necessitated? Is it because there's a new government in place, really? Oh, I oh. cannot say emphatically it's because there's a new government in place, but right. uh, it's been happening uh, in the NADMO structure oh. uh, that people move and then some people uh, take over and so these are the processes that uh, led to the delay and we want to appeal to all the directors from the district level up to the national level uh, that we've we've gone far where we've reached uh, is almost a done deal okay. and what we need once it goes to a controller then they do the biometric processes okay. and then the, the the pay will begin so, to so because we are doing this story a lot of your directors are watching so yeah. a lot of your staff are watching yeah. what are the time lines you are giving them 
that um, now you have the clearance from the finance ministry. Yeah, yeah. Up until when are they likely to get? Uh, I cannot stick my neck out definitely because we have played our part, done what we need to do at the end of NADMO. Right. Uh, when it goes to controller, then they are in charge of the processes and I don't speak for controller. Okay. So I cannot give definite timelines mm -hmm. uh, to say within a week or two weeks uh, they are going to have them. But what I can tell them is that there's been agreement that oh. every time owed them from okay. day one till now will be paid them in full. Okay. Uh, even if we are going to stagnate the payment, every penny will be paid to all of them. They should continue to uh, exercise a little bit of uh, patience uh, and everything will come. They will smile very soon. And finally, before you go, the rains are here. How prepared yeah. is NADMO and what are, the, what are some of the steps or measures you are putting in place to reduce life. Uh, yeah, you thank know, you. Life that, that's a very good question. Uh, in fact, following the uh, continuous report, every time it rains, then we hear somebody is dead and co. Our director general instructed all the district directors of NADMO in Greater Accra. We met them and then he instructed them to go and intensify community sensitization and education in the communities and then let the people know uh, the dangers when it rains, how the floods get, and then where the identified safe havens are so they can move there and then the route to those safe havens so right. that they will not be washed away by any flood water. Mm -hmm. And so that's the directors have accepted and they are working assiduously on that, sensitizing uh, the community. We hope and pray that any time the next heavy rains come, we will not hear any uh, bad story of somebody losing his or her life. Okay. We would, uh, would uh, have to leave it here for now, but certainly we will be working closely with you yeah. uh, in the coming days. George AEC is the Communications Director for the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, and uh, we'll keep an eye on the, the promise they have made that all their staff should uh, just keep their, um, you know, give them a bit of time and they will sort out all the money issues regarding their pay. That's it for now, but uh, we'll shift our attention to some other stories this afternoon. The Rastafari Council of Ghana has called off its intended march aimed at pressing home the council's demand for decriminalization of marijuana. It is the second time the council is calling off an intended demonstration for the same cause. Acting Public Relations Officer of the Council, Moses Asanti Mireku, said that the police had secured a 10-day injunction to prevent them from proceeding on the action. He indicated, however, that the first National Cannabis Conference would be held on the 23rd of July. The police, however, on 20th June, served the Rastafari Council a court sermon prohibiting this intended march. This sermon did not specify the date on which the courts will be moved. An invitation by the police to appear in court came yesterday, 25th June, after 9 a.m., and a subsequent call from them minutes later to be informed that the case has been heard in our absence, where the judge has placed a 10 days injunction on the planned march. On behalf of the Advocacy Committee of the Rastafari Council, Ghana, we would like to appeal to you all our members and allies in this struggle to once again mobilize our human and financial resources to contest the position of the Ghana Police Service on the rights of citizens to demonstrate against laws that are inimical to the state, taxpayers, users and cultivators of cannabis. We will reappear in court to reassert our rights and our continued unflinching and your continued unflinching support is one against needed. We would like to, on this note, remind all allies in this struggle that the use of cannabis, the medicinal plant with industrial properties, has existed since the presence of man on earth, and the prohibition inspired by racial unjust laws is gradually defacing out of constitutional laws in many states, including former colonial states. And this is immensely due to its economic and medicinal properties. We hereby call on you to continue to resist all forms of oppressive restraints in our quest to achieve the decriminalization of cannabis in Ghana. Let's join the advocacy committee to educate the Ghanaian public on the huge benefits, whilst demystifying associated myths and misconceptions about cannabis. In other news, uh, if President, well, it's actually related, if President Akufuado really wants to take Ghana beyond aid, he must legalize marijuana. These words were uh, spoken by the chairman of the Rastafari Continental Council, uh, Ahuma Okante, 
uh, popularly known as Daddy Bosco, in an interview with TV3's Natalie for another report, was first aired on the 10th of February this year. Over the years, the psychoactive drug, derived from the cannabis plant, has become a frequent drug used by many individuals across the world. Cannabis, also known as marijuana, has held sacred status in several religions. It has been used in an entheogenic context as a chemical substance used in a religious, shamanic or spiritual context. In modern culture, the spiritual use of cannabis has been spread by the disciples of the Rastafari movement, who use cannabis as a sacrament and as an aid to meditation. Ehuma Okansi is the chairman of the Rastafari Continental Council. He turned a Rastafarian in his teens, putting aside his dream of becoming a Roman Catholic priest. What was your upbringing like? Did you grow up with parents who were Rastafari? No, I grew up um, yearning to be a Roman Catholic priest because I was an altar boy growing up. My parents were, my mom was a headmistress, my dad was a head teacher in the Roman Catholic tradition. So they were strict disciplinarians, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just that Rastafari is a calling. When, what was the turning point for you? I think when I was like 13 years. And around that time, Bob Marley had done um, what you call a song called Rastaman Vibration. And if you listen to that song, it speaks to your heart. It has a line which says, if you get down and you quarrel every day, it's like saying prayers to the devil. And imagine a 13 year old boy, these were poignant statements for me. And from that time, I've been a Rasta man ever since. In Ghana, cannabis is illegal. However, Ghana along with Nigeria are among the top illicit cannabis producing countries of West Africa. In spite of the drug being illegal in Ghana, the economic benefits of marijuana cannot be overlooked. In 2015, Colorado collected more than $135 million in taxes and fees on medical and recreational marijuana. Sales in the state totaled over $996 million. Sales in North America drew 30% to $6.7 billion in 2016. And is projected to increase to $20.1 billion by 2021. According to ArcView Market Research, legal marijuana presents the possibility of tremendous benefits to economies on a local and national scale. It could also help to secure the investment portfolios of investors across the country and further afield as well. As is so in California, the setting up of marijuana nurseries and dispensaries could also help in the creation of jobs and result in greater economic boom. Ahuma Okansi says it is unfortunate the drug is still illegal in Ghana. Adding marijuana legalization does not lead to a commensurate rise in crime. Uh, marijuana is one of the sacraments of Rastafari, so um, some Rastaman smoke it, some Rastaman drink it, some Rastaman use it as herbs for, um, for medicinal purposes. However, there's so many people who are not Rasta who smoke weed. So it's unfortunate that uh, marijuana use or weed smoking or use or whatever is tied to Rastafari. Today as we speak, if you do a poll of um, weed smokers in Ghana, you'll be surprised that Rastafari will be a minute percentage of that whole. And so for me, that dispels the notion. I feel like the status of marijuana in Ghana affects in any way your lifestyle? Like it. Definitely, and it's unfortunate because um, the profiling of Rastaman is something that we, we detest. If President Nana Dodankwa Kufuado um, wants to actually take Ghana beyond aid, he has to legalize marijuana. That the revenue he can generate from marijuana, um, decriminalization or legalization, would help him actualize the Ghana beyond aid. 
Cannabis has mental and physical effects, such as creating a high or stoned feeling, a general change in perception, heightened mood, and an increase in appetite. The American Association for Cancer Research has found that marijuana works to slow down tumor growth in brain, breast, and lungs considerately. Studies further show the drug is also helpful in treating Alzheimer's disease, glaucoma, and relieving arthritis. The decision of the legalization of cannabis ultimately lies with government, but with a growing population of marijuana users and the socio-economic prospects of legalization. An open public discourse of marijuana will certainly be beneficial. Natalie Fort, TV3 News, Accra. Just watching the story, I feel high. Right. Uh, let's come in studio and speak with Anel um, Yeboah. He's the commander-in-chief of the Economic Fighters uh, League. And they have added their voice to the Rastafari Council for the decriminalization of weed in Ghana because there are some economic values uh, attached to, the, to, to weed. Uh, you saw the figures there. Okay, so let me just ask you, first of all, thank you for joining us. Um, to start with, our laws are quite clear that it is illegal to either carry or grow or sell marijuana. Apart from joining crusades and campaigning and asking it to be decriminalized, what else have you done? What other major steps have you taken? Well, I mean, what you have said are in themselves major, I mean, steps. Um, we notice that what the public needs the most um, is education. But even the good book has said that for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Our people are perishing because they have very little knowledge when it comes to the, the, the substance, marijuana, which is why we need to intensify the education. Take somebody like um, the former UN Secretary General, Kofi Annan. Kofi Annan was a powerful advocate for the legalization of marijuana. The Yet, medicinal, he was looking at the, the medicinal component. But it is still marijuana. And yes. it, it's important that we don't downplay any sides of this. Even for those who want to use it for recreational purposes, we can't downplay the, 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 the essence of recreation in our society. Mm. Now, beyond that, talk about even the fashion industry. These days, you see a lot of young men trying to keep beards, grow, beard. grow their beards and all of that. Find out what materials or what products they are using. And you'd realize that they contain marijuana. Our women, they love, I mean, their hair. I mean, take, I mean, a product like hemp. It's on the market. And they use it. So marijuana serves many other useful purposes. Mm. You can use it in the clothing industry, in making shoes, in making bags, in making soap, and mm. all of that. So, so you, are, you, are, you are more concerned about the, the economic benefits the nation can rip from it, and even individuals. Absolutely, and especially... How, how then about the health fears? People naturally have a fear. Growing up, we were told that if you smoke weed, you will go mad, and yes. that we could, you know make you touch yes that is the sentence that we've grown yes. up with how yes. does that play into your yes. campaign yes and that's part of the education that needs to be offered marijuana so it's not true that it could get you why then jamaica should have the biggest um, psychiatric center in the world unfortunately they don't i mean fortunately so all of these things i mean take ghetto ghana those who live in, I mean, uh, ghetto communities and all of that, where um, the use of these substances, I mean, is very prevalent. Mm. You would, I mean, they have sustained the, 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 the argument in such a way that you could tell that, I mean, all the things that were said about marijuana use, mm. I mean, falsely, I mean, are, 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 are evident. So we want to highlight the economic benefits that the country could 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 get, and I'm happy that the Bosco even mentioned. I mean, that um, and even tied it into the fact that the president has a vision of Ghana beyond aid mm -hmm. and all of that. Our own prophet Bob Marley also once pointed out that in the abundance of water, 
the fullest testing. We have marijuana in this country, I mean, of the highest quality. We can be raking big businesses. Talk about recently the deal between Uganda and, um, and, and Canada. 162 million, just two or three or four marijuana deals could help resolve the issue of our debt. Our government has taken so much, I mean, borrowed so much, close to about 80 billion. So, so this is what we are talking about. Decriminalizing it and, uh, um, and the fact that you are asking for legalizing. So w which is which? Is it the decriminalizing? So we, are, we, are, we know that parts of it cannot be, for instance, people who can use it, where it can be used, where it can even be smoked, and then legalizing it, which is a total blanket, free for all, um, you know, smoking or drinking spree of it. Which are you actually campaigning for? We are for decriminalizing it. Why do you decriminalize uh, nature? Mm. The fact that you had very little knowledge on it doesn't mean it has no useful purpose. It's like water. Right. Somebody can drink water to death. It doesn't mean water kills and therefore water should be banned. It simply means you need to know how to use water okay. in order to obtain the benefits that comes out of it. Right. You have been in this country for long. Do you think that we have the political will and the capacity to regulate and monitor if it is decriminalized? There's a lot of hypocrisy, I mean, at that level. Those who aren't hypocrites, I mean, uh, hypocritical about it, are uh, those I have talked about within a certain class range and all of that. They are the ones that even go out there and say that I smoke marijuana, I use marijuana. Mm. But beyond that, the political class, the business class, and those who use it, mm won't come out and, 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 and say that I use it all because of the stigma, stigma. and the I mean, character assass assassination that comes with it and all of that. But we need them to be able to come out clearly on this, especially with, I mean, a high-level education that, mm. that can desensitize, I mean, people on the, on the, on the propaganda effect that has had, I mean, in so the, in the past few years. So are you pushing for law reviews? Are you doing anything maybe with parliament? Well, well, you see, we want things... Uh, concrete. From, from, yeah, something concrete Conc from your side. Is there anything concrete. like that? I mean, yes. I mean, and um, our research um, department um, has finished with the conducting of the, how do you call it, their research on how it is going to benefit, I mean, our country. Okay. And um, we hope that um, in the coming days we put it out there I mean, to the public. We would also uh, send copies to the um, finance, I mean, department and, and to de parliament and government and, and, to all, government and all of that to, to okay. look at it. So, all right. these but are do some you, of the do you smoke it yourself? Yeah. Well, I don't, but it doesn't mean that I shouldn't um, advocate, uh, for. Uh, advocate for something when I know, I mean, what the benefits could be to Why, why to, don't to all you? Of why don't you smoke it? I don't mind trying it, but yeah. um, unfortunately, I don't. You don't. Okay. All right, so uh, thank you very much. We'll be speaking with uh, Ernesto Yeboah. He's the commander-in-chief of the Economic Fighters League, and they are uh, part of a growing number of people who are asking for the decriminalization of marijuana, popularly known as weed uh, or ganja, in the country. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, still an, an unfolding debate and discussion. We'll keep you posted on it. Meanwhile, the video you are about to watch epitomizes Everything you need to know about how people take the issue of decriminalization of marijuana. The young man says he is a wee model. Marijuana, pa. that's why I say marijuana, marijuana. We are even too late into this time to decriminalize the herbs. But in that concept, we just also give thanks for anything that God did for us today. I love so much weed. My clothes, the fabric is made with weed. My chains, the fabric is made with weed. My boots, it's also made hemp. It's made with hemp boots. I love weed. I love juicing the weed in the morning. I love it in my cake, my cookies. I love weed in my stew, in my toppings, in my cream for my hair. I'm just a weed model. I just, I just love weed because, you know, I love it so much, you know. Him just loved the way, didn't it? All right. So um, it's a debate I'm sure you're also having at home. Do let us know what your thoughts are on our various social media uh, handles. We'll be happy to read it to the rest of the world. On MTN Video Report for today, our citizen journalist Frederick Opoko is concerned about the unhygienic and deplorable state of a toilet facility at the Tema Senior High School. Viewer discretion is, however, advised.
This is a facility being put up at Tema Secondary School. A wonderful facility that we have spent money on. Nobody cares. A toilet facility for students to use. Just look at all this. We have spent a huge sum of money to make this place tidy, but look at what is happening. Just at the center of the school, a place which has been tired. So, how are we developing the nation? We spent huge sums of money develop things and let it go waste like this. This is Fred Okoku Anno reporting for TV3 News. You can also send us your video report via the WhatsApp number 055-1433-044. 055-1433-044. And I will happily share it with the rest of the world. Stay with us. This is Midday Live. We'll be back with more. Thank you for staying with us. Let's do business now. And uh, Ghana requires some $4 billion to extend electricity to hard to reach areas onto uh, the national grid. As at the end of 2018, the national electricity access reached 84.32%, with 93% urban and 71% rural, making government uh, to revise the target of the universal access by 2020 to 2023. Deputy Energy Minister Mohammed, Dr. Mohammed Amin Adam disclosed this at the fifth mini grid action learning event jointly organized by the government of Ghana and the World Bank. Now, Enterprise Group has emerged the market leader in general insurance for 2018, accounting for 14.6% of the market share. The group's annual turnover stands at 132 million CDs. Four months in 2018, net income rose from 542,651 in 2017 to 607,167 in 2018. Net benefits and claims shot up to 283,573, up from 275,699 in 2017. The group also reported an increase in total equity and reserves from 308,779 in 2017 to 576,553 in 2018. Three years ago, we had uh, about three operating companies. Today, we have six. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this year, going into next year, we'll have at least maybe another two. The group also maintained market leadership in general insurance. We would like to start our operations in Nigeria in the life business. We've also announced to the market that we are working very hard to uh, come into the health insurance market. The pioneering indigenous insurance company with 95 years experience in the local market and listed on the stock index of the Ghana Stock Exchange currently has five operating subsidiaries, namely Enterprise Insurance, Enterprise Life, Enterprise Trustees, Enterprise Properties and Transitions. <laughs> All right, some story just coming in. And unauthorized structures at Atemuda and along the East Legon Road in the Greater Accra region have been uh, flattened or demolished by officials of the Ayawasu West Municipal Assembly as part of an operation to read the streets of um, some of un these unauthorized structures. The day two operation or the, the, the two day operation saw about 100 structures being demolished. Chief Technical officer of the assembly, Augustine Okai, said that the exercise would be sustained to prevent people from occupying the shoulders of the road illegally. And just for Pong has more. The main focus is on the um, the Atemoda uh, sport. You know the kind of activities going on there is an eyesore. Uh, we realize uh, prostitutes and. Um, we smokers and others have been frequenting the place and uh, the neighborhood has complained bitterly about it and they've threatened that uh, they, they are going to stop uh, paying property rate to the assembly because uh, the area is a prime area 
and they expect it to remain as such. And that's why we are here this morning. How are you going to ensure that they don't return to the same spot again? Yeah, we'll be monitoring. We'll be monitoring. Um, uh, this time, we uh, wouldn't allow maybe uh, the structures to start coming before we uh, go there. Maybe weekly, we'll be monitoring the place to make sure they don't come back again. That's it for the news now. We'll be back shortly. And that's it for the bulletin. It came your way from our studio here at Adesao in Accra. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Martin Siedu Date. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. Do have a good afternoon. As always, stay positive. Bye for now.